the digital thermometer. Let's start with the introduction. When we talk on a landline, we generate the sound signal. This sound signal is transferred from the speaker to the listener via a telephone cable, but not in the form of a sound wave. First, it is converted into an equivalent electrical signal at the transmitting end. This electrical signal then travels through the telephone cable and then again at the receiving end, it is converted back to the original sound signal. A device that converts one form of energy to another is called as transducer. Thus, microphone, sound to electrical, and speaker, electrical to sound, are the two examples of a transducer. Depending on the principle of operation, transducers can be classified into basic types such as electrical transducer, mechanical transducer, thermal transducer, etc. Let's start with a resistive transducer. A circuit of a resistive transducer is as shown below. As seen in the diagram, a slider is free to move from end A to end B. At end A, we get zero output and at end B, we get full or maximum output. The output voltage is obtained between position A and the slider position. Thus, we get a voltage divider rule for output voltage as E out equals R into X upon R into X plus R into 1 minus X into E, which comes out to be E out equals R into X upon R into E, thus E out equals X into E, where X is the displacement and E is the input voltage, thus output of a transducer is proportional to the displacement. Next type of transducer is an inductive transducer. Inductive transducers work on the principle of the induction of magnetic material. In an inductive transducer, output of the transducer changes as per the flux of the circuit, thereby determining the mechanical displacement of an object. There are two types of inductive transducers, such as self-inductance transducer and mutual inductance transducer. In a self-inductance transducer, the magnetic material is connected to the electrical circuit and is excited by the alternating current. At the bottom, there is another magnetic material that acts as an armature. As an armature is moved, the air gap between the two magnetic materials changes and the flux generated by the circuit changes. That changes the inductance of the circuit and its output. The output meter directly gives the value of the input mechanical quantity. In mutual inductance transducer, we have two different coils. In the first coil, the excitation is generated by an external source of the power and in the second coil, the output is obtained. The output is proportional to the mechanical input. The common examples of inductive transducers are metal detectors, distance measurement, etc. Next type of a transducer that we will study is a linear variable differential transformer abbreviated as LVDT. The motion of an object to which LVDT is coupled is converted into a corresponding electrical signal. Let's see the construction of a LVDT now. A linear variable differential transformer consists of three coils, one primary coil as P1 and two secondary coils as S1 and S2 wound on a hollow cylindrical former. Secondary coils have equal number of turns but are connected in series or position, meaning that the EMF voltages induced in them are opposite to each other. Primary coil is connected to AC mains. A movable soft iron core slides inside the hollow former. The position of the movable core determines the flux linkage between primary winding and each of the two secondary windings. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Working of LVDT is as follows. When the core is at the central position, the EMF induced is zero. When the core shifts towards secondary winding one, that is S1, due to the displacement, more magnetic flux gets linked to coil S1 than S2. As a result of which, an EMF induced in the coil S1, ES1, is more than S2, ES2. 
the output is the difference between two EMF voltages. Hence, when the core moves towards coil S1, we get output as V out equals ES1 minus ES2. Similarly, when the core shifts towards secondary windings to S2, due to the displacement, more magnetic flux gets linked to coil S2 than S1. Hence, an EMF induced in the coil S2 ES2 is more than S1 ES1. Thus, output becomes V out equals ES2 minus ES1. Thus, using LVDT, the displacement of a core is converted into equivalent electrical signal. LVDT is commonly used in digital weighing machines, along with load cell, which we will see shortly. Next, we will study about phototransistor. Phototransistor belongs to a family of light detector devices, such as photodiodes, photoresistors, solar cells, etc., which convert light energy into electrical energy as current or voltage as per their application. Phototransistor is a light sensitive device consisting of NPM transistor in CE configuration with base of transistor open as indicated in the figure. A direct voltage VCC is applied between the emitter E and the collector C so that the collector junction JC is reverse biased and the emitter junction JE is just forward biased. When the base is not illuminated by light, the thermally generated minority carriers produce a reverse saturation collector current IC0. As the base is open, the base current IB is zero. Thus, the collector current is found to be IC equals beta plus one into IC0. When the base is illuminated by light, additional carriers get generated in the base which result into additional reverse saturation current IP. Thus the total collector current in presence of the incident radiation becomes IC equals beta plus one into IC zero plus IP. Thus in phototransistor light energy gets converted into the current. Temperature transducers are devices which convert thermal energy into electrical energy. Different types of temperature transducers are thermocouples RTD, resistance temperature detector, thermistor, etc. We will see them one by one. The first temperature transducer that we will study is a thermocouple. A thermocouple circuit is formed when two dissimilar metals are joined at both ends and there is a difference in the temperature between the two ends. The difference in temperature creates a small current and is called the Seebach effect after Thomas Seebach who discovered this phenomenon in 1821. The next temperature transducer is a resistor temperature detector or RTD. RTD is a sensor whose resistance changes with the temperature. As we can see in the circuit, resistances R1 and R2 are fixed, R3 is variable and Rx is RTD. The ratio of the bridge becomes R1 upon R3 equals R2 upon Rx. Thus change in the resistance of Rx changes the ratio of the bridge and we get the current in the circuit. Thermistors differ from RTDs. The material used in a thermistor is generally ceramic or polymer while RTDs use pure metals. Thermistors are made up of semiconductor materials. Thus, the resistance of thermistor decreases with the increase with temperature. Using the Steinhardt Hart equation, we can calculate the temperature of the thermistor from the measured resistance. The Steinhardt Hart equation is 1 upon T equals A plus B into ln of R plus C into ln of R cube, where T equals temperature in Kelvin, R equals resistance in Ohms. A, B and C are constants which can be determined from experimental measurements of resistance. Common applications of thermistor are used as current limiting device, used for temperature control in toasters, coffee makers, etc. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. The next transducer that we will study is strain gauge. A strain gauge is a passive transducer which converts the mechanical 
elongation and compression into the resistance change. We know that the resistance is given as R equals rho into L upon A. Strain gauge uses the property that change in the length and area of cross section of a wire changes its resistance. The characteristics of the strain gauge are measured in terms of a gauge factor which is defined as a unit change in resistance per unit change in length of the strain gauge wire. It is given by a formula GF equals DR upon R upon DL upon L where R equals resistance of the gauge wire in ohms, DR equals change in resistance of a wire in ohms, L equals length of a wire in unstressed condition in meters, DL equals change in length of a wire in stressed condition in meters. Strain gauges are mainly classified into two types such as semiconductor gauge and a wire gauge. Wire gauge is again subdivided into three types as bonded, unbonded and foil type strain gauge. We will only focus on bonded strain gauge. These gauges are bonded with cement to the surface. The shape of the wire grid can be square, rectangular, circular etc. Bonded strain gauge has two leads for external connections which are isolated from each other. As the gauge wire changes its length, its resistance changes and corresponding change in resistance gives us the required output. Next type of a transducer is a load cell transducer. As the name suggests itself, a load cell is used for weighing extremely heavy loads. Load cell uses strain gauge for measuring the weights. The weight or load is applied along the direction shown by the arrow. Due to the stress of the load, the steel bar gets compressed along the vertical axis and expands along the XY axis. Due to this, the resistance of the strain gauge A will decrease and resistance of the strain gauge B will increase. The two gauges on front side and two gauges on the back side form a bridge increasing the sensitivity of a load cell four times as compared to a single gauge. Change in the resistance of the strain gauge produces the required output signal and correspondingly determines the weight of a load. Next, we will study about weighing machines. Next, we will study about weighing machines. The different blocks of weighing machines are load cell unit, amplifier, analog to digital converter, processor, display driver, display and printer. Weighing pan is directly connected to a load cell unit. Load cell unit has bonded strain gauge which converts the weight into electrical output. Zero setting adjustment is also provided with load cell unit. Electrical output of load cell unit is amplified by an amplifier and is converted into a digital signal by A to D converter. The processor can be a microprocessor or a microcontroller. Its main function is to process the input data, to store it in a memory, to perform computational operations the advantages of weighing machines are accuracy of measurement, facility of storing the data, digital display, no wear and tear, and long life. The only disadvantage of this machine is requirement of high initial cost. The last thing that we will study is a digital thermometer. Special purpose thermometer used for the measurement of temperature is called as a digital thermometer. The block diagram of a digital thermometer using thermocouple is as shown. As we are using thermocouple, we have two measuring junctions, T1 and T2. Wires from junction T1 are screwed directly to an isothermal block terminal strip. The temperature T2 of this block is measured by the sensor and applied to the compensating circuit. The compensating circuit produces a voltage which is added to thermocouple output and is proportional to temperature T1. This compensated voltage is in millivolts. So it is applied to an amplifier which amplifies it to a desired level. This amplified voltage is passed to A to D converter which converts it into digital form. This digital voltage is then linearized by a linearizer and then applied to a digital voltmeter which gives the direct digital display of temperature T1. Let's have a quick review of what we have learnt. 
A device that converts one form of energy into another is called a transducer. Thus, microphone, sound to electrical, and speaker, electrical to sound, are the two examples of a transducer. We learned three types of transducers, such as electrical, mechanical, and thermal transducers, wherein we studied resistive transducer, inductive transducer, phototransistor, as electrical transducer, strain gauge, load cell, LVDT as mechanical transducers, and thermocouple, RTD, and thermistor as temperature transducers. In resistive transducer, the change in the position of a slider changes the resistance of a circuit. Thus change in the displacement brings corresponding change in the output. Inductive transducers work on the principle of induction of magnetic material. They are mainly of two types, self-inductance transducer and mutual inductance transducer. Next we studied linear variable differential transformer or LVDT. It converts mechanical movement I of an object into equivalent electrical signal as V out equals ES1 minus ES2 and V out equals ES2 minus ES1. Next, we study the phototransistor. It is a light sensitive device consisting of NPN transistor in CE configuration with base of transistor kept open. When not illuminated to light, reverse saturation current flows through transistor. When illuminated to light, the current increases as more carriers get generated in the base. Then, we studied three different temperature transducers as thermocouple, RTD and thermistor. Main function of these transducers is to convert temperature change into equivalent electrical signal. A strain gauge is a passive transducer which converts the mechanical elongation and compression into the resistance change. Gauge factor is defined as a unit change in resistance per unit change in length of the strain gauge wire. A load cell is a mechanical transducer used for weighing extremely heavy loads. Next we studied about the weighing machines. The different blocks of weighing machine are load cell unit, amplifier, analog to digital converter, processor, display driver, display and printer. Last thing we studied is a digital thermometer. Special purpose digital thermometer used for the measurement of temperature is called as a digital thermometer.